Welcome into CBS Sports HQ. Washington Commanders quarterback Jaden Daniels is reportedly week to week with a rib injury. He was, of course, forced out of the game on Sunday in that win versus Carolina. Suffered the injury on the first drive. Later seen on the sidelines in street clothes, smiling and talking to teammates. His mom posted on social media that, quote, he's fine, end quote, after initial x-rays showed that he was okay. Uh, let's send you to Commanders head coach Dan Quinn, who was speaking to the media about this this afternoon. All right. Good deal, man. What's up, everybody? And uh, I know the most important thing uh, everyone is waiting on is Jaden's health. And so I'll start there and I'll update you with uh, what I have. That's what we discussed last week. So uh, last night, excuse me, the status for Jaden um, will put down as week to week. As you guys know, it's a rib injury and we'll take him through, you know, all the steps at practice and assess how he's doing and keep working it through that. We're hopeful he can play. Uh, but we'll also make sure to take every uh, precautionary step and do it smartly uh, for the player and the man. And so I want to make sure I give you all the updates that I had. And uh, so it's not going to be something that's going to uh, knock him out for a long term. And so, like I said, we're going to list it as week to week. And, and like I said, hopefully we'll play this week and we'll take it every day of it all the way through. So glad to open up with you guys and, and get rolling. Okay, go ahead, Nikki. Um, are you able to say what exactly he is dealing with? Uh, rib injury. Um, and so the injury came, this kind of fell awkwardly um, on the opening play. I think you'd asked me that last night, Nikki. I want to make sure I got back to you on that as well. So um, it was the opening play. He was able to finish out that drive, um, but it was the best you know call to wait it out. And like I said, we'll see where he is you know, going through the steps at practice this week and uh, we'll make a decision as we go. But literally, like, we're not going to miss one step of this. Um, you know, all the way through, we, it's really important to get it right, and we will. And medical stuff aside, I know the doctors have their say in all of this, but for you as a coach, what do you need to see from him this week to make you comfortable that he's, he can? Yeah, and I think he's such a unique player that I want to make sure he can be uh, him fully in his own way. And uh, the movement, the, you know, throwing and all the stuff that would go with that, as you can imagine. So um, I know he'll do everything he can, but uh, I'll trust my eyes and uh, certainly uh, know him well. So, um, we'll, like I said, we'll take it every step of the way. John Kahn. Yeah, just kind of playing off that, is this as much, is this a pain management thing? Is it more restrictive on his throwing? What, what's, what will be the biggest challenge for him with this? As you're going through it, like most times when there's like a core injury, John, it's uh, it's more just, you know, the movements and uh, all that goes into throwing and playing the position. So for him, uh, going through that whole process, um, you know, will be an important one for him. So um, any of the time it's with the core, it's it's with the movements. And then for decision making, you said you go with your eyes. How much will you also rely on him and where he's at? And do you almost have to temper some of that because you know how he would badly he'd want to be out there yeah that part we all know from uh, all of us that know Jaden um, like he is at his core a true competitor and uh, we wouldn't expect anything different than that but we'll really trust um, you know our eyes the medical staff and like I said we're going to make sure John we assess this every day and make sure when he's able to be him fully in that space you know, then we'll let it rip. But uh, we'll just take it, you know, as we're going through the whole week. we got practice to assess and movements and going through it. And then each day we'll have a better update. Ben? So, Dan, to some degree, this is why you guys go out and get a Marcus Mariota, somebody who has this experience. Does the fact that he uh, has the same sort of – or not the same stuff, but, like, has that mobility, is that – well, that ultimately like a big factor to have somebody who has a similar style. I guess he came before Jaden. You know what I mean? Like somebody has yes. a similar style to what you were looking at. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Ben, on that. And uh, I think what it also shows is like, you know, we take that part, you know, really important. Um, we hate that these, you know, types of injuries happen. And, you know, God forbid when they do, you want to make sure you're absolutely, you know, ready to deliver um, in that space. And Marcus is that type of player. And uh, as much as you don't want that those injuries to happen at any position in the NFL, we know um, it does. And so for him to step into that space, um, it was an important win. Certainly not a great one with you know players being injured, but it was an important one. And on the sideline, you can see the support 
that Marcus got, you know, from his teammates. And I think that goes a long way uh, of being ready and all the things that happen when no one's watching. You know, the staying after practice, going through a, a two minute to get ready. And it, sure enough, it happened right before the half to go down the field on a two minute. He literally had done that on Friday, Ben, uh, post practice with a bunch of guys and going through to get full speed reps. So um, it's funny how those things, you know, come up and you're ready and you're able to deliver. So um, that's. Marcus, you know, being ready when, when called upon. And I know this isn't necessarily a, a plug and play operation, but the fact that you guys were able to maintain the efficiency and uh, that you've had throughout the year, what does that kind of say just about how the offense is, is running right now? Yeah, I think it uh, shows there's a lot of confidence in the plan uh, of what we would do and how to feature the players of doing the things, you know, that they do best. And uh, so I wasn't surprised to see uh, Marcus perform well. Um, we've all seen it. What I thought was really strong, Ben, was this is a guy that missed a month, you know, of being on IR at the start. And so for him to battle back uh, from an injury and get back into the reps, um, that took work to do that. And so he got some playing time early in one of the games. Can't remember which one right now, but, you know, that was important to get going. And then this one uh, to get in for the almost the whole game. So I think um, Jaden, you know, left after the first drive. So that was a big deal. Damn. So Commander's quarterback Jaden Daniels is officially week to week. According to head coach Dan Quinn, says they'll basically assess his movement and kind of take it day by day in terms of starting this coming week. Of course, they've got the game against Chicago, says they want to do it right, but also says lots of support for backup quarterback Marcus Mariota in the building. Uh, other injuries, of course, from this week, from Sunday, Deshaun Watson done. He is he has an Achilles tear. He'll have surgery on that. His season is over. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, the torn ACL season as well. DK Metcalf. MCL sprain probably going to miss a couple of games and Aiden O'Connell has the broken thumb so he's done for four to six weeks. All right for more on these injuries and a big return from injury let's welcome in CBS Sports HQ injury expert Marty Jeremiel. Marty Jeremiel pardon me uh, so Marty there you heard it uh, Jaden Daniels week to week with the rib injury uh, what's your kind of assessment of this in terms of what you heard from Dan Quinn and what you know about this type of injury? Well, Jeremy, after week seven, these injuries keep piling up. And unfortunately, this week, we also have a couple of season-ending injuries. You know, with Jaden, you know, he was seen on the sideline battling a lot of pain on the left side of his rib cage, And he was um, taken back and unfortunately could not return. Now, he was in great spirits on the sideline in the second half. And that is a great sign, as we now know that x-rays were negative, And he has what basically we have a bone bruise on that left side whether it's a bone bruise or an oblique strain like Anthony Richardson or even a fracture, all that is pain management. So to Coach Quinn's uh, report, that's exactly the case. Day-to-day, week-to-week, extensive pain management treatment. Now, it's so important to think about this type of player, this dynamic player that scrambles out of the pocket and goes often off platform and the oblique area and it, is, it takes a lot of torque to just throw the ball so it, it's not just the rib cage contusion it's a rib cage contusion with a dynamic player like uh daniels so commanders welcome the bears at 4 25 p.m eastern time this coming week that game on cbs a uh, week to week for daniels might see marcus mariota again in that one all right the san francisco 49ers have all kinds of injuries to their wide receiver core and some bad news with brandon Ayuk and acl tear so that puts him out for the year what does his immediate future look like here marty man the 49ers offense has been decimated and unfortunately this week we have to add brandon Ayuk to that list the replay was pretty much textbook for me. The torque on that knee was textbook for an ACL and other type of structures that are related to stabilization of the knee. Here's what we know. Is it season ending? Yes. Is it career ending? No. He's expecting a eight to 10 month recovery and be ready to play at full participation in August for camp. We look at these season-ending injuries very differently. Yes, at the moment, they are very difficult to deal with, deal with mentally. But once you have the plan in place, these are nothing short of opportunities, not only the time away from football, to get your mind right, your body ready, and fitter and stronger than ever, and being ready to go, almost like a reset 
uh, for next year. Niners host Dallas on Sunday night football. Okay, for Seattle, uh, DK Metcalf it looks like an MCL sprain for Metcalf. Most of these players that get MCL sprains miss one to two games. Is that the expectation here for you uh, if it is the MCL? Jeremy, absolutely. The silence was deafening with the Seahawks fans as they saw their main man, DK, being uh, carted off. Great news about this injury. Why do I say great news? Yes. MCL sprain, one of the four major stabilizing ligaments of the knee. But it's a very large ligament, a very long ligament, and a very strong ligament. However, when it does tear, it rarely tears fully, and it always heals 100% of the time without surgery, but extremely painful, which is why he just didn't feel right when he tested it on the sideline. I expect to be out for about two games, at most four games. But knowing a player of his magnitude and such a gamer that he is, I would not expect any more than two games. But really good news for Seahawks fans. Yeah, Seattle welcomes Buffalo in the late window this coming week. Uh, Deshaun Watson, we got the news from him, a torn Achilles. He'll undergo the same procedure as Aaron Rodgers. Now, Marty, we know Rodgers. We talked a lot about the Rodgers injury. He was back at practice in 77 days, but given the state of the Browns, obviously there's, there's no urgency here, and there are questions about whether we're going to see even Watson play again in a Cleveland uniform. But in terms of the recovery, I mean, what are you looking at from him? Do you expect to possibly see him back on the practice field? Well, this morning, the MRI confirmed what we already knew, that Deshaun Watson suffered a season-ending Achilles tendon rupture, which occurred as he dropped back to pass and then the push-off. It's that moment in time from drop back to push-off where the tendon is, is at its weakest and the maximum tension is on it and the load was just too much. He actually spoke with Aaron Rodgers as well as the team physician of the Packers, and it looks like he might be going for the traditional repair because to your point there is no immediate need uh for him this year so why not take your time it's a marathon not a race now i reported yesterday that that range could be anywhere between six and ten months why all based on the procedure he opted to have if he goes with the aaron Rodgers speed bridge procedure which accelerated aaron's rehab that's less than six months if he goes with the traditional uh, rehab and, and surgery like Kirk Cousins, that's closer to 10 months. But both of them, despite uh, having two different procedures, Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers are having excellent mobility this season. And Deshaun is only 29. So I expect him to once again have that reset of the time away from football, get his mind, get his body straight. I think he'll be very effective and actually participate in many of the different activities during OTAs in May. All right, well, still with the Browns, running back Nick Chubb returned from knee surgery, 11 carries for 22 yards and a touchdown. Kevin Stefanski said his touches were limited in the second half of that game as they try to ramp him up. So as he moves forward, Marty, what kind of, you know, workload expectations should we, uh, should we have for Chubb? Well, Jeremy, first off, Nick Chubb's return is simply unprecedented. Let me remind all of us what he had. He had a knee dislocation. It wasn't just an ACL tear. It was a knee dislocation, which he pretty much tore every major stabilizing structure of the knee. Here's the, 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 the catcher, is that he also had the same knee and another knee dislocation in college. The odds of that are insurmountable. The fact that he had it twice, insurmountable. What we know about knee dislocations doesn't come from football. It comes from being hit by a car. So picture him being hit by a car, not once, but twice. So his recovery is nothing short of remarkable. So proud of that young man to put the work in. I saw videos on social media of the amount of weight he was squatting. I just bowed in absolute awe. His load will be managed. Reps will be managed, not unlike a pitch count in baseball, but I expect them within two to three weeks to be full go with with uh, limited with um, limitations at all. But man, hands down to that young man who just overcame 
all the odds. And we certainly hope he stays healthy and with the Watson situation and the way the Browns are right now. Obviously, there's not a lot of urgency here, but certainly hope that Chubb gets back to 100% in terms of helping to carry this Browns offense. They welcome the Ravens in an AFC North battle. Cleveland have yet to win a game at home. Our CBS Sports HQ injury expert Marty Jeromello joining us here on HQ. And of course, for all the latest from the NFL, highlights, scores, and analysis, be sure you keep it locked here. It's all here on HQ.